Hey AP seminar students, it is Mrs. Malloy and I am here today to talk to you about performance task two and more specifically, what are we going to learn? Well, we're going to continue our conversation about the stimulus, but now that we've talked about all the sources, we're going to focus on the idea of how to use the stimulus material. More specifically, we're going to focus on the idea of essential use and how essential use of the stimulus material means that if you delete the reference, if you delete the stimulus, it is going to weaken the argument. So let's review what this means and what it looks like. So remember, as we've talked about in that first video, in order to get yourself graded, you need to identify a theme connecting at least two sources. Your research question is going to be generated as a result of this theme, right? It's gonna be inspired by a theme connecting to. That just gets you graded. Just because you get graded doesn't mean that you automatically earn points on any rows of the rubric. It just means like you've passed go and you can move on. What we're going to focus on today, though, is the use of one stimulus source in an essential way. You have to integrate one of the stimulus sources into your paper, into the argument of your paper, in order to earn points on row one. So if you identify a theme connecting at least two sources, it can get you graded. If you don't use the stimulus anywhere outside of that introduction saying, here's how I got to my topic, you can earn zero points for the first row of the rubric. So you can be inspired, but you can lose points. And so this is a row that's really, really um, accessible and easy for you to do well. So I wanna make sure you understand what it means by essential use. So if we dig into row one of the rubric and we dig in a little bit deeper, we'll notice that for the five, it says the response demonstrates the relevance. And I wanna just stop there, the relevance. This means that you're not just cherry picking a line and throwing it in there and saying, hey, it works, but the source is re like the relevance of the source, okay, of at least one of the stimulus materials to the argument. It's demonstrating relevance. It's authentic. It's connected because it's integrated into the paper, okay? So this can be as a claim, like part evidence to support a claim. It can be evidence to support a counterclaim. We'll talk more about that in a minute but the idea is that it's integrated. It's a part of the actual argument. Now, you will notice this is a binary row. You either get five points because you do it right, or you get zero because you use the stimulus, but it's not really relevant, or it's a throwaway line, or you don't incorporate the stimulus at all. So if you're thinking of this in your traditional high, medium, low, a medium and a low use is gonna get you a zero. You have to do it well to earn the five points. Okay, and you don't want to walk into rubric row um, two and have zero points right off the bat because you didn't use the stimulus well. We want to use the stimulus well. So where should I use the stimulus to make sure that it's essential use? Well, evidence to support your argument, evidence to support your counterclaim. Sometimes the stimulus can be used to show that other perspective. Um, sometimes students are afraid to use it as a counter, but it works really well sometimes. Evidence to support other evidence. If you can put the sources together to help make a point, um, or it can be used to establish the value of the topic. Now, I put an asterisk next to that last one to establish value, because I will say as a grader, this is one where there's a lot of well-intended kids to show value, but a lot of times what we see is the kids, instead of showing value for why the topic matters or setting up the context, they instead show the value of the topic being relevant. And so it, it's a harder one for students to do well. So if you are gonna use it to establish value, just make sure that it's value to the argument, not to setting up the research question, okay? When is it not essential? Well, it's not essential when it is exactly what I just said, justification for how you got to your research topic. It's not essential when it's unanchored quotes of the stimulus that are just thrown into paragraphs, right? Or sometimes it's a discussion that you throw in of the stimulus and it lasts a couple lines, but it's really not authentic to what's being there. Distorting your argument to fit the stimulus in. So if you just throw in like, okay, I'm going to talk about this. I think I can pick this one line from the stimulus. I'm going to throw it in. I'm going to move my argument slightly in this direction. Now they meet and then I'll go back to what I'm arguing. It's not that. It's also not a brief reference in your introduction or your conclusion. Okay. 
it is a part, it's integrated, but it's integrated in an essential way. So how do I check to see if it's essential? Well, my favorite thing to tell students is, first of all, to check for friends or references. Now that might seem kind of silly because you're like, friends, how am I gonna know if this source has friends? Well, what I mean here is if you think back to the work you did on the individual research report or the IRR, you put sources in conversation. And when you put sources in conversation, you use phrases like they say, I say, except they say, they say, right? Like Smith, Jones said, or unlike Smith, Wilson found. You started to show connections, right? They had friends, sources were talking to each other. That's what we want with the stimulus material as well. If it's authentic, the stimulus has made friends in the paragraph. It has people it's talking to or with in order to build your argument. So if you remove it, one of those friends or those references would notice that it's gone, right? So we wanna make sure it feels essential because it has friends. Another thing that you can do is highlight your uses, delete those uses, and then read your argument. If it doesn't change in terms of strength of the argument, not the grammar and mechanics, because obviously if you just take out a chunk, there's gonna be a weird non-transition or there might be flow issues or grammar or mechanics, but really think about the content. Does the argument weaken if I get rid of it? And if the answer is no, it's not essential, okay? Compare your uses. Now, you might be thinking, Mrs. Malloy, you said I only have to use it one time. That's true, but I encourage you to use it multiple times. The students who do really well and earn those fives give themselves multiple opportunities to use it in an essential way. So the more often that you can use it, not like only about your source, but if you can use it two or three times, it helps you have more chances of doing it correctly. The last thing you can do is define its purpose. So think and ask yourself, what's the function of this stimulus? What is it doing for my argument? If you can't answer that question, then it probably doesn't have an actual function. If you can answer it and you're very clear about how it contributes to the argument, then it probably becomes essential, okay? So let's practice. I'm going to, for the purposes of this, just really focus on the highlighted parts. If you would like to pause the video and take time to really read the paragraph and make the decision, you can. But for the purposes of you just really walking away with an understanding, I'm just gonna talk you through. So what we're looking at here in the highlight is Thatcher and Montgomery. But what we're seeing, if we look at this, this is unsurprising given that technology has increasingly been a tool, a key tool to facilitate scientific understanding of complex problems ranging from global, global climate change to urban transformation, which helps people better react to them. This is a throwaway line. It is really meant to set up a topic. It is not essential in the paper whatsoever. Rather, it is just the student saying, hey, technology, this is what Thatcher said. This is what Montgomery said. Now I'm going to progress. Okay, so this is non-essential. Same thing with this next example. If you want to take your time, pause the screen, read through it, and decide you can. If not, I'm just going to talk you through what's highlighted. So in the green, what we notice is this conversation about um, or reference to looking for the Gulf Motel by Blanco. And the comment says, it touches on the fact that land that used to be there is gone. He describes how he wishes nothing was lost from urban development, that the mangroves were still there and not in the golf course. Not only are memories lost, but even lives can be lost as a result of a bigger and more spread out cities. Now, this paper, if you look at the line before it, it says climate change is an issue. Well, this is talking about development. So what the student did is they said, hey, Blanco talks about things that are missing. Um, and so I think that things that are gone, that we don't have anymore, that's a very, very loose connection to um, resources and different types of things that we won't have if we can't stop climate change. So therefore, I'm gonna take this source, I'm just gonna throw it in there, I'm gonna distort my argument so it works, and then I'm gonna move on because this one casual reference should work. But really, this is non-essential, okay? Now, if we look at this example, right off the bat, again, same thing, if you wanna pause the video and read through it, feel free to do that. But some of you might be saying, oh my gosh, there's a lot more here. Um, this definitely has to be essential just because the, more, the longer the reference, it probably makes it essential. Well, the answer is 
No, that's not true. Um, this is also non-essential because if we look here, according to Thatcher, and then they give this line, but let's pay attention to one specific line here. This source in the stimulus material helps open our eyes to the effects of something that most people seem to overlook. Many efforts to halt climate change are focused on stopping actions that we already do. Thatcher brings up the fact that if we continue to rapidly increase the population, it's going to be even harder to stop. Now, is this relevant to what the student's arguing? Sure. Can Thatcher be used in an essential way? Absolutely. But does this reference do it? No, because this is just saying, look, this stimulus material talks about this. It diverts the argument that's being made to talk about Thatcher to then tell us what the stimulus source says, then it moves back into its argument. If it really wanted Thatcher to be used in an essential way, it would use what Thatcher is saying to help support its argument, not to pause and just tell us what Thatcher says, because what I could do here, I could delete this whole section and this paper still works. That's how I know it's non-essential, okay? And then let's look at this one. Same thing that we saw before, feel free to pause if you want to. The ability to forecast the trend of urban transformation is highly valued because it helps the municipal governments to effectively monitor the population and build mechanisms to react to the aforementioned sustainability related issues that would normally emerge from the urban setting. So here's Montgomery, but look at this. Indeed, with reliable data for population predictions, politicians will be able to decide how to distribute resources and where to build new infrastructures. So Montgomery, has made friends with Simpson. If you remove Montgomery, Simpson doesn't work. And neither does the University of California reference that it follows in the next paragraph. Montgomery has now become essential to the argument because the source didn't stop. The student didn't stop and say, let me tell you about Montgomery. Instead, it said Montgomery's arguing this, which is helpful for us to understand this, right? Montgomery becomes essential to Simpson. He has made friends with him. They need each other for the student to make an argument, okay? So there's the big difference here. So what's our takeaway? Our takeaway is you have these seven sources for a reason, okay? These seven sources all connect in multiple ways. Some just connect between two, some connect between seven. There are abundance of themes that you're going to see, but it is your job to stay true authentically to the source but also to figure out how you can incorporate the source into your argument while making it essential to your argument and keeping true to what the source is arguing. We're not gonna jam it in there. We're not gonna distort our argument. We're not gonna have a casual reference because if we do, that's how we get a zero on row one. So remember, essential use of the stimulus material means that if we delete it, the argument weakens. So really take your time as we start thinking about your research question and moving forward in this process that once you've decided what that theme is connecting to, you start to think about what argument you're going to make with the research question, keeping in the back of your mind that I have to use or you have to use one of those stimulus sources in an essential way as you move forward. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you find some joy in your day and we look forward to seeing you next time.